So let's dig a little bit deeper now into ArcGIS. Uh, we've got three different sections here in this part of the seminar. We'll go over the components of ArcGIS, we'll talk about the benefits, and then we're going to talk about some success factors that, that you can take back to your organization. So first of all, ArcGIS is evolving. Just like any technology, uh, it evolves with the market. It evolves as technology evolves uh, and as business evolves. And ArcGIS is a technology platform, and so it's been evolving and will continue to do so. But it's not a dramatic change if you think about it. If you look at this terminology, it's really the same concepts. It's just a little bit different terminology. So we've gone from simply supporting client server to now supporting, or supporting web services and apps. And again, accessing these easy to use apps uh, for many device. And we've gone from the need to create custom applications which were really expensive and risky and hard to support um, to these commercial off the shelf configurable template apps that you can just grab an app, configure it in a few minutes and then go ahead and deploy it. And then it's supported by Esri, right? Uh, and then when we come out with a new version, we'll migrate it for you. So it helps and makes your GIS more sustainable and allow to quickly and less risk um, and cheaper deploy apps uh, um, different than when you had in the past. And then we've gone from digital cartography to smart mapping, where now the software is looking at your data on the fly and making suggestions on ways to symbolize it and make it more effective. So um, again, new terminology, but really the same kind of concepts uh, as part of this evolution. So let's talk about ArcGIS 10.5 for a moment. Uh, talk about two different deployment patterns. You've really got ArcGIS Online, which is software as a service, uh, cloud service, where Esri handles the infrastructure and the service level agreement with you, and uh, you use it to d deploy apps and, and other things in your organization. And then there's also what now what we're calling ArcGIS Enterprise, where that's installed in your infrastructure. And that infrastructure can be on-premises, it can be in the cloud, it can be anywhere, it can be a combination of those. And really, they support the same foundational capabilities. But ArcGIS 10.5 Enterprise allows you to expand that and add additional capabilities that are not available on ArcGIS Online. And we'll really highlight these uh, later today. So talking about ArcGIS Online a little bit, um, we've got some really in incredible numbers to, to share with you. You know, There's over three, 3 million users. Uh, we've got an annual growth rate of 30% in those users. Uh, last year, there were over 94 billion web map views, and that's growing at 35%. Uh, there have been 6.2 million items shared, and that's growing at 40%. And then in data downloads, last year we had 15 million open data downloads, and that's growing at over 400%. So uh, ArcGIS Online is, is a key part of the foundational part of ArcGIS, and it's really, um, the acceptance is really continuing to grow rapidly. Got some new and improved features, smart mapping and 3D, some new analysis tools, vector tiles, um, and other things. And then we've got some more things coming, of course. We've got improved search, improved data management, org-to-org -org collaboration, raster analysis, and other things that'll continue to come with new, new releases of ArcGIS Online. And now there's ArcGIS Enterprise. Uh, again, and this includes four different components, ArcGIS Server, Portal for ArcGIS, uh, the ArcGIS Data Store, and the ArcGIS Web Adapter. Uh, we've got some new capabilities at 10.5. We've got improved sc scalability. We've got uh, some new applications that you're going to see later today. We've got GeoAnalytics. We've also got Insights for ArcGIS. We've got new capabilities inside of Image Server called Raster Analytics. Um, then we've got Portal Replication and Python Web Scripting and so forth. So you're going to see a lot of these things later on today. And then I want to make sure that everybody understands that it's not an either or. Like you either have ArcGIS Online or you have ArcGIS Enterprise. Most actual customers will need both, which is a hybrid approach, uh, and they'll have both. And many people today are using ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Server. That's a hybrid approach right now. So um, it's not an either or. In fact, they work really well together. You get the best of both worlds, actually, uh, in that, in that uh, deployment pattern. Okay. So what I'd like to do is set some context for today by sharing a customer success story with you. And I don't want this to just be a cool video that you watch and go, wow, these people did great work. What I want you to do is look at this video, and we're going to review parts of it afterwards, because I want you to have some takeaways to see how you can learn from what they did and take it back to your organization and do the same thing, right? We don't want it just to be a, a fun video to watch. So this is the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services, also known as Cal OES. This is a story about their recent changes in how they deployed ArcGIS. My name is Dan Bout, and I serve as the Assistant Director for Response at the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services. 
Cal OES is responsible for all disasters that occur in California that exceed the locals' abilities to respond to them. Far and away, the biggest challenge we have as it relates to data in an incident is synthesizing data into information that's useful. So there's a huge potential for miscommunication. And as you get more and more data feeds, that becomes a more and more salient issue. Here is the latest on the breaking news we're following out of Northern California, a strong earthquake. Wrong Parts of Napa got earthquake. hit hard, hammered by this quake early this morning. One example. The Napa earthquake example. truly showed us the power of visualizing information. The ability that we had at that time to create flat maps in a not so speedy way kind of showed a gap that we had in our ability to really visualize the information and get it out in a fast manner. You know, the people on the ground, they need the tools so that problems can be solved during activation, so resources can be deployed timely and effectively. So during the Napa earthquake, the decision was made to bring Esri in to kind of show us what is possible, you know, what capabilities they have. That was actually, I think, probably one of those key use cases for moving to a digital map. The ability to start seeing water leaks in real time and like, okay, when did that happen? Three minutes ago. That is something that you couldn't do with a paper map. We went from at best 5% of online products to 95%. And that actually happened in about, say, six or nine months of uh, the Napa earthquake. Now you have all the current data that's, that's available. And, and it may change as you're looking at it. And it's real time. You're looking at what's happening now, not what happened 12 hours ago. What they showed us that day during Napa earthquake was a story map. It's interactive. It allows us to take a look at the shake map, take a look at the shelters, take a look at whatever information that we're discussing. This allows us to be able to really give the decision makers what they need. GIS changed the way we do business. We now have the go-to products. We know that this is what we need to do as a requirement. So that would be part of our common operational picture. During the fires was the first time we really used the dashboards this year. And we were able to provide a visual of acreage burn, current damage assessments. The dashboard provides that snapshot. It saves time, you know, instead of somebody stopping in the middle of an operation to brief someone, they can just walk in, look at the wall, and see exactly what they want to see. One of the areas that I think we're deliberately going to move to is taking a tool like our JS mapping capability and using that as a mitigation tool. Where I see us going is to get hooked up to every single county statewide. So when an event happens, we flip the switch on and absorb their data and then I can just visualize. The bottom line in emergency management is we are going to be successful. There's not a lot of trying involved. You have to make it work because it's, you know, it's people's lives, it's families, it's, it's their property. I mean, it's the things that are most core to our identity and, and, and to who we see ourselves as, as a nation. The technology is there and we know that it's available and we leverage to the best of our abilities. It's my dream come true. I mean, it's, it's great. All right, so I think that's a great case study. Um, and to really see how they changed the way they work, you heard that they went from 95% paper maps to 95% digital maps in six to nine months, right? I mean, that's an amazing transformation there. Um, and, you know, it, it, the other thing is they, by doing that, they were able to get real-time data, right, make real-time decisions and instantly be able to see what was going on by looking at those operational dashboards. And when property and life is at stake, you know, obviously, the quicker you can make a decision, the better. Now, we all don't work for emergency services organizations, but I guarantee you there's people in your organization that would like access to this kind of data to make decisions, uh, especially with real-time data. So what I'd like to do now is talk a little bit more about what Cal OES did. You, talk, you heard uh, the GIS division chief talking about how it actually changed the way they do business. Right? So most organizations are set up like the one on the left. They're hierarchical. They're structured. It's very formal. So somebody at the top needs something, that request filters down. Uh, many of you people here are the ones that fulfill those, re those requests, and then they bubble back up. But really what um, deploying the ArcGIS platform the way it's intended to be used can enable an organ organization to work like the one on the right, where people simply pick up a device, uh, any device, and look at an app that's easy to use and get information. Or they walk into a room and glance at an operations dashboard, can instantly see the information they need, rather than having to call somebody or email or 
uh, IM or even go visit them in their office and request it. So we all want to work and we're used to working like the, the organization formed on the right. So actually, if you deploy the ArcGIS platform the way it's intended to do, you can actually change the way your, your organization does business. Um, and you saw that happen with Cal OES. And I'd like to talk about some of the personas we saw in there. So we talked about, you saw Dan up there, talked about how he makes decisions in critical situations. Uh, he can't wait for perfect information. Speed is key. You know, effective data management is critical to what he does. Um, his solutions need to be flexible. Uh, and his role is that of a viewer. So he's not going to be editing things or doing spatial analysis, but he needs to simply view data to make better decisions. Um, and so there's several different apps in the ArcGIS collection that he could be using. Uh, and these are graphics you're going to see throughout today when we talk about different apps. And they're part of a trading card deck of each card is, has each app represented on it. And on the back, it tells you about that app. And it's a really easy way to start to discuss and learn about our apps. Uh, and we can make sure that your account teams get you a copy of those, those decks of cards. Um, so the four apps that would really serve Dan well would be some of our configurable apps, Story Maps, which you heard them mention, uh, Operations Dashboard, you heard them mention, and then Insights for ArcGIS, which is a new app that was not um, available when they did this video, but you're going to see later today. So if we talk about Jose, you know, he's got a different position. He's mitig Mitigation Planning Division Chief. You know, he has to do hazard identification. He has to do some analysis. Uh, but he has to provide information out to the public. He has to collaborate and coordinate with internal and external entities. His role is also a viewer. But he can use the exact same apps um, that Dan would be interested in as well. So it talks about how the, you know, th this illustrates how these apps have multiple um, capabilities here. I love his politically correct quote when he talks about the Northridge uh, earthquake response and then how Cal OES was able to prov uh, provide the f paper maps in a not so speedy manner, right? So, you know, is, they is, were having... Is there anybody here from Cal OES, by the way? No. No? Okay. okay. Um, anyway, so I think that was, that was pretty interesting that he was kind of really frustrated uh, and how long it was taking to get data. And so there's switch to the story maps, uh, especially for him who's providing information to the public are key, and then those operational dashboards. You know, Dwayne, he's managing people out in the field, right? So he's got to really make decisions on where to move resources and where they need to be. Uh, his role is a contributor, so he's actually going to be editing data, maybe deploying crews to certain areas and telling them where to go. Uh, and then it's the exact same apps that the other two have needed as well. And then lastly, we can talk about the GIS division chief. You know, her, her um, goal, which many of you have the same goal, is simply to support your organization's mission with the power of location, right? And you've got to deploy the platform, hopefully using best practices. Uh, they're very focused on real-time GIS, obviously, for, for emergency services. Um, wants to provide access on any device. Um, and then collaborate internally with other agencies as well as the public. Um, we want fast, configurable app deployment with little risk, so we want to use some of those configurable apps. And then her role as an expert, and she's going to deploy the entire platform. So there are people just like this, you know, in your organization. You have a Dan or a Dwayne or a Jose, and they need access to these kind of apps. So provide that with them. You've got the tools. You heard the GIS division chief say that they already owned the software. They simply weren't deploying it the right way. Um, so they just partnered with us and, and made that happen. So here's the dashboard, that the, one of the dashboards that they deployed. Again, very much more informative than a paper map. And actually, if you think about it, if I was a GIS manager, the number one thing at the top of my list would be to deploy operational dashboards. And why is that? Because who uses operational dashboards? Managers, executives. If you get them to become GIS users by running their organizations via an, uh, an operational dashboard and they get used to making decisions based on this information, that's elevating the value of ArcGIS in your organization, and they're going to appreciate the value of it. And that means you might get more resources, more staff, more hardware, software, be able to go to more training and conferences and so forth. So if we can make some uh, people that are important that make decisions uh, become users of ArcGIS, then uh, that will trickle down to you and, and really unlock the value. Some more points here. Um, I love how they said we, they partnered with Esri. Okay, so I'm an account manager. I work with uh, local governments in the southeast United States, and I seek to partner with all of my customers. Some of them it works out and some of them it doesn't. But I'll tell you that the ones that I truly am partners with, more than just a vendor-customer relation, um, ship, they're getting the most value out of ArcGIS, and we really work together as a team. 
So I would suggest that if you're not working closely with your Esri account team, please reach out to them. That's all of our, all of our goals are simply to make you uh, successful and to partner with you. So uh, partner with your team and uh, we can really help you do a lot more. You heard about how it changed the way they, they work. You can actually make an organization work better and more efficient uh, by deploying this technology. The transition took only six to nine months. The technology was already there and you heard her say it was really a dream come true. So we'd like to see all of you have the same kind of uh, results in your organization. And, okay. and Adam, I wanna add one quick thing. <coughs> Everything you saw, uh, whether it was an app or the people, wouldn't have been possible without you guys. Because you're the foundation of GIS in most of your organizations. You're building that content. You're collecting all that data. And without you, that stuff wouldn't be possible that you just saw. So remember that. Even though you saw dashboards and maybe an executive talk about it, that's not possible unless you guys are there 24-7 sometimes just making amazing content. That's true. I mean, that's a great point, Harry. I mean, without the data that you guys are managing and, and the analysis that you're doing, none of this none of this works. And how many people here do we have that are the only GIS person in your organization? Can I get a show of hands? Okay, wow. Okay. Power so you to guys, you. Yeah, power <laughs> to you. You guys are lone wolves. I've been there. Uh, I've been an only GIS person, and so you're, you're the start and end of it all, and, and more power to you. So whether you're a single GIS user in your organization or you're part of a, a larger team or a multi-department team, um, we're going to hopefully show you a lot of things today that ed everybody, again, can take back to the office. Um, and, you know, it shows how ArcGIS is scalable and, and it can do lots of things depending on, you know, independent of how big the organization is. 